Tigers of Auburn against the Cardinals of Louisville. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I am Brent Musburger. For every college basketball player of the dream, get to the Final Four, win the national championship, take that shot. Eight teams still with that dream, and the cream starting to come to the top. Stars like Kenny Walker at Kentucky, David Robinson at Navy with a shot, and Billy Packer. There's one of those primetime stars at Auburn who dreams of getting to the Final Four. Well, you better believe it. In Chuck Burson, we have one of the outstanding players in the country. Maybe not as well recognized as some of those that we talked about earlier, but he is an outstanding player in every facet of the game. Now, how about Billy Thompson at the Louisville end? Why isn't he mentioned in the same breath with them? Well, he came into college and the hype of being the number one high school player in America. I don't think people appreciated this total all-around game, Brent. All right, the coaches match up here today. Sonny Smith for Auburn, Denny Crum against Louisville, and here's how they view this game. We've got to uh, force them to take the outside shot. They're so physical inside that uh, uh, if you let them get the ball in there, they'll get it in the basket on you. The offensive key for us will be to get the ball inside and possibly get some of their inside people like Ellison in foul trouble. I, I do know that, that if we're going to have a chance to win this game, we're going to have to do a job on the boards because they're one of the better rebounding teams that I've seen all year. Defensive key is shut down their running game and not let them kill us in the half-court game. I think the running game is more important to shut down because I think if we play a half-court game that we have a better chance. Billy, follow up on those keys. Well, I think a real key is going to be staying power. Both of these teams came off tough games the other night. They're great physical athletes. Who can go the longest? Okay, defensive adjustments. The trouble there for Louisville is they switch all over the court. Person could get in some mismatches. Now the Final Four mystique. Will it affect Auburn more than Louisville here? It probably should because Louisville's used to go in the Final Four. For Auburn, this is going to be a tough road to hold. All right, the first of our four regional championships is about to start. We'll meet the lineups in just a moment. Let's meet the starting lineups for Auburn and Louisville, and here's the PA announcer, Mark Seegers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Summit for this afternoon's West Regional Final between the Auburn University Tigers and the University of Louisville Cardinals. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For Auburn, at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, number 34, Chris Morris. For Louisville, at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, number 41, Herbert Cook. For Auburn, at forward, a 6'8 senior from Brantley, Alabama, number 45, Chuck Herson. For Louisville, at forward, a 6'7 senior from Camden, New Jersey, number 55, Billy Thompson. For Auburn, at center, a 6'7 sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama, number 40, Jeff Moore. For Louisville, at center, a 6'9 freshman from Savannah, Georgia, number 43, Purvis Ellison. For Auburn, at guard, a 6'1 junior from Augusta, Georgia, number 12, Gerald White. For Louisville, at guard, a 6'4 senior from Ashland, Kentucky, number 42, Jeff Hall. For Auburn, at guard, a 6'4 junior from Kissimmee, Florida, number 15, Frank Bull. For Louisville, at guard, a 6'5 senior from Camden, New Jersey, number 20, Bill Wagner. And introducing the head coaches for Auburn in his eighth season, Sonny Smith. For Louisville in his 15th season, Denny Crum. For Louisville and Auburn, the last stop on the road to the Final Four. For one of these teams, Dallas is next. An impressive three-game run in the tournament by Louisville so far. They got past Drexel, Bradley, and then North Carolina on Thursday night. Now for Auburn, you will note that they have knocked out three conference champions, Arizona of the Pac-10, St. John's of the Big East, and UNLV of the PCAA. The referees here this afternoon, Don Rutledge, Charlie Baca, and Lenny Wirtz. And we've got three good ones for this contest here this afternoon. It's hard to believe, Billy, that Louisville is playing Auburn for the first time ever. 
Well, you've got to remember, Louisville had a hard time playing SEC teams. It was a long time before they got a chance to play Kentucky. And the SEC and the Metro uh, haven't had that many matchups. Louisville, the higher seed, so they are the home team, and they're wearing their whites. Tap is controlled by Louisville, and that was Crook who got it back into the arms of Milt Wagner. What should we look for with this Louisville attack, Billy? Well, you like to see the fact that everybody in the team can post up, and that's a big advantage they normally have, except against an Auburn that has good all-around team size. Good defense now by the Auburn Tigers, and they come right back down, and they get the first field goal, Frank Ford. Frank Ford on a chair last year in the NCAA tournament, picking up right where he left off. Ellison. The Tigers hit the boards, and that's going to be one of their keys here today. All tournament long, they have powered away inside. Person's first shot, and it'll get the ball. And he is not afraid for fans that have never seen him play to put the ball up from 22 feet. He's got great range on that jump shot. Billy, the fans should watch as that blue and orange muscles its way toward the glass. Remember that the good teams only hit around 50%. That means 50% of the time you're going for a rebound here at one of these ends. And Auburn has been so powerful inside. That shot was altered even though it went in. Good defense. And that was Herbert Crook who got the ball to bounce. And now pressure from Louisville. Typical 2-2-1 full court. Pressure picked off. Great steal. Crook comes back and he has backed up field goals to tie it. Well, Crook had been, was the man of the hour against University of North Carolina also, coming up with so many big plays. That was just a case where Auburn relaxed. Obviously, Denny Crum's coaching staff doesn't think the Auburn guards can handle their pressure. They're showing more heat than they did the other night against the Tar Heels. There's the man who can burn you from any place on the court, Chuck Person. Well, Crook, I'm sure in the scouting court report was told, make Person put the ball on the floor, and twice in a row he hasn't picked up. If you've got a shooter with that kind of range, you've got to make him put it on the floor. Coach Crum was just telling Billy Thompson, when he gets down here at the offensive end, make sure you circle through and make the cut and get through. Sonny Smith now is yelling defensive instructions. Now take a look at this view here in this arena. Notice at the top of your screen, now there's the clock. The trail official, his job is to see that the clock is moving. We should not have a problem here like they had in Kansas City last night. There's a better sight line for the referees. It is tough in the Kemper Arena. That is a high scoreboard. You have to look up, and of course, the other official over at the table, he should have been the one who noticed it last night. That's what led to that tremendous problem in the Michigan State game. Ellison is 43. Gets it inside, and here comes Thompson, but the whistle had blown, he traveled. Brett, one thing I noticed in this game already, Louisville is so used to playing against teams that they can post up inside because of a mismatch. They can't do it against Auburn, because no matter who picks up a man for Auburn, they've got about the equal size of the Louisville player they're guarding. Now, Auburn must get Morris into this game, number 34. Sometimes he disappears, and without him, they're not going to have a five-man team, and they quickly get it to Ford as he glides inside for that one. Ford was one of the most heralded players in all the country as a high school senior. Many people thought he might have been one of the best all-around players in the country. Billy, we talked about pressure. Auburn is four of four at the start of this game. And Thompson bounces off of Morris and hits that field goal, and it's a two-point game. I think Auburn's going to play much tougher than folks expect. Coming right back is White. Well, if anybody wondered whether or not they were going to choke up for a, an opportunity to go to the Final Four, they've come out blazing. Much better than they did against... Hall with a jump pass deflected out of bounds. Look at that hand movement on the side. One of the things about Auburn, Billy, remember what they did last year in the tournament when they came alive. Exactly. They made a good run at the end of the year, coming from eighth seed in the SEC tournament all the way to, to play three games in the NCAA tournament. I can't believe there are empty seats here. Where are the basketball fans in Houston? I mean, this is a confrontation. The winner gets to go to Dallas in the Final Four. We have the zone defense by Auburn in the out-of-bounds situation. Again, good size. Thompson. They can rebound well out of it. Billy Thompson has been so hot. He's in a situation he averaged 14.8 points per year on the year. Coming into the tournament now, in tournament games, he's 20.6 points per game. Billy, the fans should watch how Person moves around, changing his location. But his best spot, the one Louisville is conscious of, is where he's burned him in this game. And Moore was short that time. Hall, the guard, loses it back. Moore, and he just holds his arms and wraps him up. He says, I don't want the three-point play, big fella. Don't throw an elbow at me. I'm just making sure that you're not having an easy basket on me. I'll send you to the line, but don't swing at me. A good play by Hall. He goes there to make sure there's no three-point play opportunity. You can see Moore ready to come back with that arm. He didn't 
driven Hall all the way back to Kentucky if he ever made contact. The fans over here on the Auburn side, they don't understand that, but Jeff Hall winds up making a smart basketball move. He probably, right before that, should have given up the ball so they could have got off to a break. Hall certainly doesn't want to make more. Andy Moore was the player of the year in Alabama as a senior in high school. Looks like one of Pat Dye's tight ends. Well, he is a powerful young man. The Charles Barkley miniature. Barkley, of course, played at Auburn with Chuck Person a couple of years ago. Becoming rapidly one of the real stars in the NBA. Sixty-six percent free throw shooter on the year. Auburn doing a good job on the foul line, shooting seventy-five percent as a team. Boy, this is a day for the Southeastern Conference, isn't it? Next game, Kentucky LSU. There's Morris back to the glass and hitting. I love the way Auburn opened up in this game. They got fire in their eye and they're confident. Good job by Sonny Smith too to put a little pressure on Louisville. See if they can handle it. Two-two-one press. Same thing that Louisville uses. Here's Thompson jump pass into Hall, who gets inside for the reverse layup, and he's got it. Now, Louisville has hit five in a row after missing their first shot. Auburn, they're also ripping away right now. They are five of seven from the field. There's Moore. Oh, he missed everything. Overshot the basket that time. That gives Milt Wagner an opportunity. He's on the right side. Prefer the ball in the middle. Get it back. Kirk on a jump pass. Thompson didn't expect it. One pass too many that time. Cook had the easy shot. Very difficult to make that play inside from about four or five feet. Yeah, a little temper flare early, Brent. We could have a war out there as we take a look at the athletes that are on the floor. I would look for Thompson and Person to settle things down. Their friends, where were they playing together? Teammates in the World University Games. Paul. In the World Games, uh, Roy Thompson. Had the great game against the Soviet Union, which we uh, came up in second place. Chuck Person was voted last year as the outstanding amateur in the world for the United USOC. And Person up over Ellison. He'll get the roll. Oh, quick release that time, too. Got that soft touch. That's two in a row that he's put up on the board and had an opportunity for that soft touch to roll it in. Now Hall goes to the left-handed dribble, comes to the baseline. Jeff Paul was known primarily as a spot shooter. Now you see he's putting it on the floor a lot more. All five starters are double-figure scores, so you have no weak link there offensively. 15-12, first half. West Regional Final. Winner goes to Dallas. Final four. Person misses from the baseline. He's been more effective at the top of the circle. Cook with a rebound. And that is Billy Thompson guarding him in that man-to-man. -man. Wagner gets his dribble back. Here is Crook. Won't be there, and more rebounds. He gave Louisville just one shot, and they come down on the break. They get it back to Moore. And that's what's nice when they have five players on the floor that can all pull up and take the jumper. Both of these teams are extremely versatile in that regard. It's figured to be an up-tempo game between these two teams, even though Sonny Smith would like more of a half court against Louisville's athletes. Purvis Ellison. Well, they're shooting. What I see right now is Auburn players are extremely tired. And, and they may, you know, that emotional outburst you put in the beginning of a ball game, plus the physical, sometimes just wears you out. You've got to get your second breath. So they go from Not outside, and they showed a little tired on that shot. Gerald White was off on his rotation, and I see that Sonny Smith, just as you say that, Billy, Sonny decides to go to his bench, and Michael Jones, a 6'7 freshman forward out of Columbus, Georgia, is going to be the first substitute. We're going to have a timeout in the game. They need a breather. Pleasant memories for Louisville of the summit and certainly for Daryl Griffith who helped lead them to a national championship. Daryl, uh, you qualified for the Final Four. Who'd you beat in that regional final? Well, we played the SEC team, uh, SEC team here, Brent, uh, in LSU, and we beat them in 1980 by 20 points to advance to Indianapolis. Hey, uh, Brent, check the rock on his hand right here. He says this is what Louisville's going to do again. That's the trophy yeah, well, from the last this, time, huh? Yeah, well, this is something I always wear and I always cherish, and I hope the team can do so this year. Daryl, I know you're not in the NBA right now because of injury uh, when will you be able to work out again tell the folks what happened to you uh, well I broke my foot in the pickup game playing with these guys in October uh, and at that time I was in the uh, contract negotiations and uh, I wasn't signed so uh, I had to uh, sit out this year make sure I get my foot right because I think I got many more years and not, not a use of me pushing it. 
Thompson missing, and Louisville controls and gets it back, and then he fumbles the ball out of bounds on the turnover. What do you see in the game so far? Well, it's a fast-paced game, as I expected. Both teams are, uh, have a running style, and uh, it's indicated by the score. Uh, Auburn is playing tough. Uh, they're a team that the uh, University of Louisville cannot uh, underestimate, and uh, they're playing with confidence each game in the tournament. They got the ball inside to Morris that time, who missed. Cook down with the rebound, and they'll come and set it up. Are you surprised at how well Auburn has looked against them? Well, not really. Uh, as uh, Speaking to some of the players in some of the interviews, they seem very confident, and like I said earlier, uh, and it's showing them about their play. All right, the alley-oop pass. They miss it. Cook rebounds, and he'll bring it out. Daryl, I know you're working on the radio. We want to thank you very much for dropping by, and good luck. Yeah, take care. All right. The Cardinals come down to the attack. It's 17-16. Auburn leading Louisville. We have 13 minutes to go here in the first half. Fred, I think because of the pace of this game, we're going to see the bench play a big, big role. And in the bench play, Louisville has some kind of an advantage. And the ball stays in Louisville's possession. But hey, I just reached over here to check the stat. In the tournament now, off the bench, Louisville has scored 19 points and Auburn only nine. There's that edge you were talking That's about. That's right. And rebounding-wise, it's 3.7 to 9-0. Jeff Hall hits the field goal, it counts, and there was a foul inside underneath. Pushing off on the inside. It's just so long that you can go at a pace like this. We're talking about a 18, 17. Here's the push on the inside. Both people fighting for position. Billy Thompson made the first contact, got him up, didn't get away with it. The three officials tough down on that baseline to be pushing and not get caught. But Hall's field goal counts, and it's 18, 17 Cardinals at the 12, 38 mark. Chuck Person made a good move there and a nice job on a switch by Milt Wagner. You know, Hall is off to a perfect start. He is 4 of 4. Wagner has not taken a shot yet in this game. Person is 3 of 5. Both teams shooting very well from the floor. But note that Louisville is getting a lot of baskets in close, in that paint area. Auburn has been sticking jump shots from the perimeter. It's tough to keep that up. There's that tight man-to-man -man defense. A lot of switching by Louisville. And Auburn trying to work out a lot. double post down inside. Thompson was right with Person, so it'll be Morris down a little bit lower, and they need his contribution. You notice since Billy Thompson switched over to Chuck Person, he's playing him real tight on the outside, making him put the dribble down. Ellison quickly to Hall, who is perfect. There's his first miss, and White comes down with a rebound. Auburn guards a good rebound. Ford and White. And he got it into Ford's hands, too, and again, Ford makes that graceful move and then uses the backboard so well. Ford's really a small forward that plays guard. Ellison turns around and got the roll. And the pace continues red hot. Mike Jones a little bit too small to guard Ellison. You notice when Ellison turned around for that jumper, he just shot right over the top of him. Jones is only 6'7". Ellison is 6'9". Giving up two inches against him. Moore is out right now for the Tigers. Ford is inside. He comes up. Allison was there. Thompson rebounding. Here's Wagner. They've got to stop Mill. He'll pull up and take the jump shot. Looking to get into the scoring column. Misses his first shot, and the Tigers run it down. Not an intelligent pass, and the Cardinals were there defensively, and Thompson has lost the ball out of bounds. That's the second time that Louisville had a good interception and tried to put it on the floor and lost it before it was Hall. When you create a turnover like that, it's good to scoop up the ball and get two hands on it. Second stuff to check in, Billy. That's a guard, Terrence Howard. He's a sophomore from Macon, Georgia. And now we see that Mark McSwain, 6'7 forward, a junior out of Atlanta, comes in. And Ellison will take a break at the 11.04 mark. It's 21-20. Auburn leading Louisville West Regional Final. The winner goes on to Dallas next Saturday in a spot in the Final Four. Now size-wise, they're almost exactly the same, these two ball clubs. They match up perfectly. Morrison able to go up as high as Billy Thompson. We'll see Morris right here. Good pass. Billy Thompson going up almost hand for hand. Lob not there. That's two personal fouls on Thompson. And Kimbrough, that is Tony Kimbrough, the freshman from Louisville, a swingman to play forward or guard. Wagner and Hall both out there. Kimbrough playing time up front. Boy, he's good from the perimeter. Yeah. Chuck Person. Person putting on the floor, two dribbles. Good play. Swain at a high post. 
for this attack. Kimber over on the wing. Crook is out there. Brewerway sends it over and back, a turnover. Auburn's ball. And again, those freshmen get a little shaky sometimes in the NCAA tournament game. The one point I made, and I made it to several of the Louisville players, actually, after the game on Thursday, I always believe that when you knock off a team like North Carolina in the semifinals of a tournament, there's a tendency to be somewhat flat the next time you go out when you play in Auburn. Yes, they've had a great run of the tournament, but you don't view them, perhaps, with the same respect that you've got for North Carolina, and it takes you a while to really get into the flow of a game. But Louisville better not keep that flow going that long because Auburn certainly is a quality club. Much better than folks realize. On the penetration, Howard dishes off to the side. And Louisville comes away off the miss. Michael Jones took the shot. Wagner gets it over into the hands of Crook. Boy, he is always at the right place at the right time. That's a big basket. Wagner almost turned that ball over coming up the court. Slipped out of his hands. This is Terrence Howard coming to the attack against Hall. You see the screens inside there. There's gets a four. mismatch. He's got in behind Kimball. What, what is happening is Louisville switching so much and very seldom are they up against a team that has so many quality athletes of this size. Auburn leading by three points here. And they have bottled up Milt Wagner so far. McSwain and Kimball runs it down and that was into traffic. Auburn defensively has got a hand all over the basketball when they try to power inside now. And their men are strong. Brent, they've got good bodies on them. So when they put that hand in there, you know, they can knock you out of the way. Now Hall, he's been deadly and he started to miss his last two after hitting four in a row. They scored with another rebound. So even when he gets stuck underneath the basket, he's a great rebounder. Now Person is four of six. Crook has him on the left wing. Thompson with two fouls. They get it into Ford and low behind. He turns on Kimbrough. That's the second time. Got caught on a switch. Ford is posting Kimbrough up inside. Denny Crumb's going to have to make a change in that assignment. And just as you say that, Billy Ellison is back up. McSwain is low. He'll have one more. Let him take it. Let's see if Auburn realizes that Ford can go on inside. Now, he's being guarded by Wagner, but when they set those switches, then Ford ends up on Kimbrough. And Ford is five of six right now, and he rotates in low. Wagner picks him up and steps out now on the right wing. Howard with the ball. Out front, they slow it down. They might go. Here's another switch on the inside. There he is. Now he's got Crook on him. Crook is there, and Ford said, no, don't give it to me. And instead, they go to Jones on the other side, and all white on the rebound. Kimbo up with it. Gets it to hands of Hall. Cross to Wagner. Wagner spins he's inside dead. and still misses it. Right back to him in his first field goal. And you know he kept it alive. Crook kept it alive on the rebounding. Even though he couldn't catch it, put that ball on that offensive board. Sonny Smith and Auburn ahead of Denny Crum and Louisville. 27-26. We've got 7.35 to go. Some first person half. wanting the ball on the step out. <laughs> Missing that time. McSwain rebounded. Here's Hall. Wagner. Brent, in a game pace like this, there is no way a starter is going to be able to go the whole way. Chuck Person is going to find, and if he doesn't get a little bit of a rest, that jump shot's going to go away from him. Now, they're trying to push him out just a little bit further when he comes down. There's more. And he's got it up. If you're Denny Crum, you want to go to this bench a lot and try to wear Auburn down. The Auburn athletes are really quality, but this is some kind of pace. Great shooting by both teams right now. 58% Auburn, 64% Louisville. And Crook had still another one. He is four of five right now. Thompson two of three, he's on the bench. Ellison two of four, he's about to come back in. Wagner two of four, and Hall four of six. For Auburn, Morris two of three, Person four of seven, Moore two of four, and Ford is five of six. Knocked away, but Jones comes up with it, and he hits, and now he's one of three. Kimbrough really having a rough time, and everybody posting him up inside. He's kind of frail in body, and those big bodies of Auburn are getting it off. Not a good shot by Kimbrough. But Cook ran down the long rebound that time. You can see how tired some of the players are. They're already bending over in their defensive stance and grabbing their pants. Swain, under pressure, forced a shot. He should have given it up. Howard gets inside for the layup. 
score the basket. Excellent play. And you see Sonny Smith starting to realize that he's got to go to that bench some too, resting some people. Chuck Person's going to come out. He was getting real tired. Howard on a great crossover dribble takes it to Lane. Good play. So they give him the basket, and then they assess him the personal foul. All right, 558, timeout. Tigers lead it by three. We're coming right back. We got three of them still alive out of the final eight. Louisville at number two. Denny Crum is a guy that believes in December that he ought to go ahead and play the best teams he can possibly play because they can show him his weaknesses better than he can find out himself. A great compliment by John Thompson who said not only does Denny play the people, if he loses, he really down inside believes that he learned something. Then we got a guy with a virtual lifetime contract he does and, and he'll be the first to admit that he said one of the reasons a lot of coaches don't do what i do is because i've got a 10-year contract and i know i'm going to be around and some other fella may be worried about winning those 20 games so he can have people staying off his back not a bad point kevin wall who has checked in at guard number 15 he will direct this attack and sonny smith has given person his first and probably his last break in this basketball game. He's over the sideline. Wagner's out there. Ellison's out there. Kirk and McSwain. That's the Louisville attack right now. Here comes Kevin Walls. Great left-handed shooter. Couldn't get that one to fall. And Herbert Crook would you the right man in the right spot. Who would you expect? Herbert Crook. Person watching from the sideline is Gerald White of Augusta, Georgia. Brings it to the attack. Augusta will be down there soon for the Masters Golf Tournament. There's a whistle sound. Yep. That's no basket by Ford. That was a solid screen by Moore. He just wiped out everybody. Ford coming off that screen to get the easy lob, but that screen just wiped out about three players. He is so wide. Auburn with a one-point lead, and Louisville and Denny Crum with a chance to go ahead now. I believe Curtis Ellison's going to touch this ball at least one time on this possession. I still can't believe that Wagner or Walls and Thompson once lost the New Jersey State High School Championship game by 20 points. Ellison, jump pass, Cook is there. McSwain has it taken right away from him. Jones got it right back into the hands of Morris. And now it is White to the attack. No the place to go. No place to go. He gave it up, and it was a foul. There's going to be a foul on a block by Herbert Cook. White really penetrating nicely, though, to go inside. Excellent ball handler, very powerful. Here he goes, and you can see Crook does not get over there in time. Crook's first personal foul in this game. Team fouls right now. We have got four on both squads, and person didn't get much of a break. Did? Well, you only need a couple of minutes to get that win back, and I, I think it was a great move by Sonny Smith because you get a tired player out there, he starts taking bad shots, doesn't get the spot on defense. You know, White is 14 for 17 on the foul line so far, 8.3 assists a game, 10 for 14 from the field so far in the NCAA tournament, so he's doing it. Moore coming inside, scoring, and he'll come up to the free throw line. A powerful move that time by the sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. How many kids are coming out of the city of Birmingham and Memphis? You know, you could almost say, coaches have the rest of the country. I'll take those two cities and take my chances. <laughs> and UAB and Auburn and Alabama, they're all getting kids out of Birmingham, and kids are all producing. Buck Johnson, the great Alabama player. Eliminated by Kentucky, but Buck will be heard from in the pros. 36-32, Auburn. There's that 2-2-1 the backcourt. Walls gets it into the hands of McSwain. Here's Crook. And Crook had his second high of the year against North Carolina with 20 points. At 28 against the Paul on national TV. Gets better and better every game. Already 12 here in this West Regional Final. Time remaining in the first half. Jim Nance and Bill Raftery will be along at halftime. Ellison knocked it free, but Swain picks Good it back. up. Gets it to Crook. And White can't control it. And here is Crook. Ah, oh, balance, but Ellison. And he missed one, but Crook comes right back on the other side. Good hustle by Ellison and Crook. The two big men in the Louisville team working all the way down on the fast break. We like to see big guys running the break. High score now. Key to get Chuck Person the ball. Let him put up something. Here he is inside in the post. Can't handle it. Got away from him. You know they're keeping him off the glass. We've got to check how they're boxing him out. He doesn't have a single rebound yet. That's unusual for Person in this game. Kevin Walls, the leading scorer in the country, is a high school player. Average score. Four points a game. Once scored 81 in a high school. Game. That's right. And, and that knee injury slowed him down somewhat, but he's getting back in stride now. Then he comes giving him quite a bit of playing time. The 
it was Swain on Persons, but Danny Crum using a lot of different players just trying to wear him down. I figure this game's gonna be one in the second half. And as he passed it back to Person, and he came into the lane, he has turned it over. There's a violation in the lane, and on that, it'll go back over to Louisville with Billy Thompson checking back in at the 325 mark. Remember Thursday night? Two fouls, he left early, took a break, came back in the North Carolina game, and he was dominant the rest of the way. Thompson being matched up by Morris down on the other end. With this lineup, look for Louisville to get the ball inside. Curtis Ellison, Billy Thompson. There's Thompson. There's Thompson. And now Louisville has run off eight straight points. So they have seized control of this game at the three-minute mark. They were down by four, came to the tie, got two more hoops, and here they are up by four. I think that you're going to have to see Sonny Smith come back with Frank Ford. He was doing such a job offensively. Great rebound by Morris. Chris Morris from Atlanta. And who's coming off the bench? Here comes Ford. Good move. Sonny's uh, thinking this game right on through. Swain chips it up. And now it's Ellison at the baseline, and it's slapped away. And as McSwain reached back in, there was contact with Chuck Person, and there will be the first foul of the game called against McSwain. Now that is the sixth team foul. Now with Ford, Ford back in the game, Brent, you can see Sonny Smith go back inside with his game a little bit offensively. Cool. We'll go to Dallas in the NCAA Final Four next Saturday. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger along with Billy Packer. Well, we got a couple of sizzling basketball teams here, Coach. We really do, and I think the athletic ability of these teams are really coming out, Brent. Neither team afraid of the challenge to get their way down to Dallas. Look at that. Auburn hitting 63% from the field. Louisville, 56. And your main man is Herbert Crook, and look at what he's doing here in comparison with the great Chuck Person. Well, he's already over his average. He's got six rebounds. Person doing the job offensively, but he hasn't gotten on the boards. Now, here we'll see Herbert Crook. Offensively, he's been just doing the job in every respect. Great touch on the jump shot, following inside, good hands, and everything that he's done has been right. Anybody surprised you for Auburn? Well, Frank Ford is a guy that I thought in the mismatches defensively when Louisville gets caught in the switches, Ford can go inside, and he really overpowers the Louisville guards. That doesn't happen often. Now, what about rebounding? Well, Louisville in the lead, that surprised me a little bit. I thought Auburn statistically would be up there more, but they're shooting so well, Brent, that they're not getting many offensive now, boards. Tell me the truth. You don't think Auburn's going to hold up in the second half, do you? I think that Auburn's going to have a problem in regard to the depth. I really think Louisville has gone to their bench well in this second half. It's really a trying type ball game to put this many points on the board and keep going offensively. I put you on the spot with my friends down there in Auburn, yep. Alabama. Well, well, I think they're going to hang tough all the way. I know you do. <laughs> I, I, I think Louisville's going to have too much bench for them. All right, we're going to find out if CBS is covering the NCAA basketball championship continues after this message and a word from you. Today's West Regional final game is sponsored by Michelob Light. Welcome back to the summit in Houston, Texas. Louisville leading Auburn by one point, and there you can see the breakdown as far as the individuals are concerned. I think I'm more surprised about the fact that Person has only one rebound to go along with the 12 points in any other halftime statistic. Brent, he's been playing on the perimeter, but again, you got to point out when a team shoots 65% from the field, there are no offensive rebounds to be had. We'll see him get on the board more in the, in the second half, but one of the key things I think that Sonny Smith did is when he got Ford back in the game, he got Auburn to go down inside, trying to play that half-court game. He's got to do more of it in the second half. Gerald White, number 12, brings it up for Auburn. He and Ford will be the guards. Person and Morris are the forwards, and Moore, of course, is in that center. Person off the dribble. Well, hits his first shot and puts Auburn up and says, let's go. You're talking about, that's a downtown jumper. That was almost from the three-point range. Hall looks inside Ellison. Ellison on the turnaround responds. You notice that Ellison gets that shot off a lot better against the Auburn. In effect, Auburn doesn't have a center. They primarily play all forwards. And Ellison can shoot right over the top of the head, no matter whether it's Moore or Morris. In any held ball situation right now, the ball will belong to the Cardinals of Louisville. There's that half-court offense. There's a switch out. Billy Thompson now on person. Ford. Ellison dueling away inside was backing Morris up, and they're going to assess Morris, and he's going to be very unhappy about that call. 
Morris, an all-freshman SEC performer last year. Sonny Smith's really been on the recruiting. He's got, you know, he's the first coach in the history of Auburn to have back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. Now he's on his third 20-win season. First time ever to win the SEC tournament for an Auburn team. Although they won the SEC championship back in 1960. All right, here's the main man, Crooks, and he's short with his first shot. Auburn comes up with it. Moore gets it into the hands of White. The point guard comes right in behind Ellison, uses him, and now he weaves inside. Oh, so left hand. What a pretty play by Moore. Followed Ellison, used his body, and sliced to the left. White's got that body to go inside. Knocked away from Thompson. Good job by Morris to come over the top to block that. You know, about that 1960 championship that, that Auburn won, they were on probation that year, and that's why their first NCAA uh, time of their year in the NCAA playoff didn't come until uh, Sonny's uh, club three years ago. They didn't participate in uh, after winning the SEC regular season championship. They wanted Crook, and it goes out of bounds on the bad pass, and you know, Milt Wagner's only two of five for Denny Crum, and he really is not in this game. He, he hadn't been in the offense at all, and one of the reasons for that, Auburn is preventing Louisville from getting on the break, and that's where Milt Wagner really gets rolling. We can on either on the break or on a delayed break, gets that jump shot off. Person trying to back Ellison in, now he comes out, and Morris takes the shot. Ellison is there with the rebound. Ball up the floor of the hall. There's Milt Wagner wide open. Good block Play by White, and oh, oh. his call. I thought he had the ball. He stripped that one. Now, Milt Wagner, that's why I was talking about the delayed break where Milt Wagner likes to come down on the side and get that jump shot. He was wide open. Let's see this play. Boy, I thought that was a good block. White's so quick and strong. You know, we have the advantage of instant replay, and I suspect a lot of folks that watched that controversy last night wondered if instant replay could have been used. Put it by the officials to solve that uh, dilemma in uh, Kansas City last night. Well, you remember a couple of years ago, we had an official use the uh, replay, and that is something that's frowned upon completely by the NCAA committee, and they told their officials right up front that they were not at any time to use TV replays. They would have gone over to the play-by-play -play and tried to sort out the time. That's right. 48-47 with the free throws, Louisville ahead. 18 minutes to go in regulation. White with 220, 212 assists this year is the all-time leader at Auburn. Broke his own record last year at 185. Hurston and Cook had switched off to take him on the turnaround. Oh, Chuck Hurston, son, prime time athlete. He spun the reverse way that time. He's averaging 11.3 rebounds in the West region. He's the number one in the region. He's the number three scorer in the region. And I believe that Auburn will have first defensive respect for number 41, Herbert Cook, in this half, too. Well, they've got the ball right. I think the pace of this half uh, really favors Auburn a little bit. They've turned it into a half-court game. Oh, on the cut. Thompson. Tough shot. Auburn has it batted away, but they come up with it. It's Morris, three on one. Bursts into the glass, missed, but they bat it in. Morris underneath, taps it in. Morris is an excellent ball handle playing from the wings. Louisville kind of getting out of sync right here. Here's Wagner. I think this is the man they need to ignite them. Sonny wanted that play defensively. And he, saw, he felt that his club was getting a nice run going. We can see Person 16 points, one rebound. Thompson been a little bit quiet here, especially since uh, right at the beginning of the game. There's Person again. Oh, That's his boy. spot. And then he crumped. I know has warned his players that this, as soon as person touches the ball, you've got to go out and crowd him, make him put the ball on the floor. Person really gasping for breath now, though. He's got to be tired. You can see him just relaxing down inside. Couldn't get up in the air. Behind him. He couldn't even go in on that right. pass exactly right, but he had to stay flat-footed in that sequence. Ball goes back, though. So a second chance here off the turnover, but person... He would love to put a stoppage in play, and Denny is complaining there to Rutledge. Yeah, he, he wanted that last play goaltending, pushing on the foul. Now you can see Auburn does a smart thing. They go zone, and this is an opportunity to rest a little bit in the zone. Thompson, a little delay on the jump. Short, and Cook going for the offensive rebound. He was fouled by four. 
Now, coach does not like to use timeouts this early in the ball game, but Auburn's going to have to consider using timeouts in this second half just to rest their ball club periodically. That's the second personal foul on foot. Back in the zone in the out of bounds situation. Wagner looks in and goes to Thompson, and on the pass, there was a foul. Person on a push to Billy Thompson. Real good pass by Milt Wagner back inside. That's the second personal on person. I like the togetherness on the Auburn team. You know, they gathered right before the, uh, the ball game together at the end of the first half, and right there again, talking it over. All returning next year except for Chuck Person. So you can see fouls build up when you get tired. You start reaching. Morris, and as he came around, he was fouled off of the steal. Thompson hooked him. And Billy Thompson saying it was his fault. He, did, he telegraphed that pass. That's his third personal foul. This is not the same smooth Louisville team that we saw against North Carolina. Now remember, to start the second half against North Carolina Thursday night, they went on a 16-4 tear. So we have had Sonny Smith and Jones into the game. And more you just saw sitting down over there for a break. Just a good move here by Auburn. That's his fourth. I could not believe Denny Crum left him in the game. And a great play by Auburn to immediately go down inside the person. Billy Thompson may be a little bit tired. Person immediately recognized what he needed to do. What posted up down low. And Thompson reached to try to stop him. Great move. Thompson leaving for Coach Crum. I was really surprised that Denny Crum didn't take Billy Thompson out. I don't know if he realized he had picked up his third. But Auburn sure took advantage of it. And he's been replaced by McSwain. Person an 80% free throw shooter. McSwain was off the bench in the first half and hit one of two. That's 19 points now for Person. That's another nice thing in the NCAA tournament to know you have guys coming off the bench that have played a lot of minutes. Auburn leading by four. Ellison turns. Great rebound by McSwain. He contributes off the bench immediately. But this is a half-court game. Brent. Different uh, pace than we had in the first half. What a person really getting good position down inside. So strong. Person pops out. Saves it. Second time he made a good left-handed pass. Ellison sticking right with him. He has a bit of a height advantage, and the person we have back Ellison in. Dennis Ellison did a good job on Doherty the other night with position defense. He did the same thing on Perkins, just wouldn't let him get the ball. Through Jones' hands, out of bounds on the turnover. We've got a timeout here. We've got 14.52 in regulation. Auburn leading Louisville by a field goal. Billy, we talk a lot about height of basketball players. The five men on the floor for Auburn average 219 pounds in size, and there has been a difference. Now, watch Chuck Person operating here against Brook. They list Person at 215. I think he weighs a lot more than that. There was that great turnaround jump shot. Excellent positioning on Chuck Person. He's really a gifted offensive performer. He's got the long range on that jump shot. Can go to the basket. Reminds you, you know, he's got the combination of Charles Barkley on the inside, Mike Mitchell, who's a great Auburn outside shooter, and both outstanding pros. He's got a combination of the two. So the favorite Louisville being met with a stiff challenge there in the West Regional Final. They were the second seed. St. John's was eliminated by Auburn. Jeff Hall bangs one in to tie the score at the 14-35 mark. Boy, Louisville's tough to defense because everybody on their squad capable of having a big night. All five starters have at one time or another led their team in scoring in a given game. Wagner fronting person on the switch. The foul was on McSwain off the pass to Ford, and that is three fouls on McSwain. We talk about weight. Ford is 6'4". He's listed at 215. I don't believe any of those program weights. <laughs> well, last year in the NCAA tournament, Ford was 21 for 30 in the three games that they played in, in tournament. He was just outstanding. Played in the Jones Cup. And in the AAU tournament, when he was in, uh, in high school, he had 49-point, 24-rebound game, which broke Magic Johnson's all-time AAU record. So, quite a talent. Dave for the SEC. They could put two teams in the Final Four. If Auburn comes through here, and of course, they're sure to one later. Kentucky and LSU are reaching foul by Herbert Crook. That's his second. Foul the ball against the Cardinals in the 
that bench scoring is hard to score if you're sitting over there and Denny Crum going primarily with his starters, huh? I felt that was the weakness of the Louisville team against North Carolina in the second half. It allowed the Tar Heels to come back against the subs, and Denny had to retreat to his starting five. And now, of course, he's got Billy Thompson in serious foul trouble. First Left him on the floor with three and picked up his fourth, and now he'll have to sit down for a while. Person's got Crook. Crook did well, a he had good quick position. job of fronting him that time, didn't he? But Jones couldn't get Banging away, but they get it to him that time. Missed the shot. McSwain and Ellison pound the glass, and there's a foul underneath. Well, there's where height really helped out an awful lot. You know, you can be a quick jumper, and you can push people out of the way, but Curtis Ellison just uh, is about three inches on his closest competitor. Three fouls on Ford as he heads back down to the other end. Of course, at the conclusion of this regional final, Billy and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both Auburn and Louisville. Terrence Howard comes in and Ford sits down as the result of those three fouls. That's a big loss for Auburn. Ellison to the baseline. The block. Jones got a piece of the hand. Got away with it. White comes back with his jump shot. Doesn't shoot often, but when he does, it's accurate. He's having a great tournament. Big overplay by Howard on Wagner. They're not letting Wagner get in the offense, Brent. So they have kept him out. He is three of six, maneuvering quickly to the baseline. Now three of seven. Fouls are starting to pile up. Now, Louisville did not go to the foul line in the first half at all. That's going to be the 16 foul on, on Auburn already here in the second half. And that's the second personal on Jones. For Denny Crum, he knows he's got Billy Thompson sitting over there with four. He's probably going to have to keep him there until the eight-minute mark or so. The winner of this game in the Final Four next Saturday will play the winner of the second game, either Kentucky or LSU. So it is possible that we would have a Louisville-Kentucky semifinal game, and then, of course, the winners of tomorrow's two games, Navy against Duke, and then a little bit later, Billy, you and I will be in Kansas City to watch the Jayhawks of Kansas go up against North Carolina State and Jim Valvano. Well, there were times last night that I never thought Kansas would be seeing the light of day for tomorrow. Quite a ball game. Great effort on the part of both teams and a lot of hype. Larry Brown can be very thankful that some days run 24 hours and 15 seconds long. Well, oh, another thing he'd be thankful when his team came back because he'd be thinking about uh, Al McGuire back in 1974 when he got those technical fouls in the Marquette North Carolina State game. That's going to be a big, big play. It was a big play. And now it's a long 13 minutes for Auburn and Louisville. They're deadlocked again, this time at 56. Three seconds in the lane, nobody calling it. Person. And oh, Morris with a strong offensive rebound, simply rose above the crowd. Nobody blocking out on that side for Louisville. You sent Auburn getting a little more and more confidence. You know, they came out in this ball game, one of the things we wondered if the mystique of the Final Four would bother them, and it obviously has not. Walter Berry can tell you they were confident about a week ago. Ellison. He is so smooth. He came out when he was introduced today and gave a high five to one of the cheerleaders. That's how loose he was. Could <laughs> she reach it? Well, she was on, on the shoulders of uh, one of the, the other cheerleaders, one of the male cheerleaders. <laughs> Contact inside before the shot, and the foul is going to go against Moore, and that is his first personal foul, and uh, Wagner and Terrence Howard exchanging contact over there. Now, Moore has really been pushing people around on the inside. He got called for that first. It's hard to believe he's been in there the whole game with one foul on him. And now Louisville's going to that foul line, and they were great from the foul line the other night against North Carolina. So far here today, they've been perfect, but they've only taken four shots at the line. Auburn is four of seven. There's their first miss this afternoon. Swain keeps it alive. Good hustle. That was Chuck Person on the floor for the loose ball. Howard gets it back to Morris. And a by Holy cow. That was Crook who pushed Morris from behind. It's good that he's not hurt. Not a smart play by Crook, not the only poor thing he's done in this game. Great pass by Howard. There you can see Crook pushed him from behind, just shocked Morris. 
Here's Person going down on the floor for the loose ball. Gets it out. Look at how well Morris handles that ball for a big man. Gets it right back from Howard. You'll see the push coming from behind. There it is by Crook. Could have been a dangerous play. Three fouls on Crook. And Morris at the free throw line. He was one of the questions for the Auburn Tigers today. How well would he be able to hold up in this game? You know, that might have been called an intentional. You bet. That might have been called an intentional. Two shot him. <laughs> well, the three-pointer has Auburn up by three. Crook comes right back and gets two of them back. So they're down by one, 11.54. I bet you Denny Crum is thinking about Billy Thompson, putting him in and taking the chance, even with the four fouls on him. White person was out to screen. Hall battled with him. Ellison picking up person right now. Sonny Smith has really used his bench nicely. He's giving everybody a little bit of a blow. Tough shot. Morris went to run it down. Banged it off of McSwain and out of bounds. Another good play by Morris. There's a case with Milt Wagner. Jumped out on person that time. Was able to change that shot a little bit. Person has such great range. Well, they may have worn him down a little bit in this game, pushing him out just a bit further than he'd like to be right now and making it very difficult for him to get the ball down low. He interchanges down the baseline. McSwain picks him up on the switch. Now they go back in behind to Morris. Oh, he got it again, and Morris is carrying the Tigers right now. Both ends of the floor. Ball saves it. Just extended big break. And Howard went down to the ground inside against Milt Wagner, and he has assessed the personal foul. He's complaining that Wagner elbowed him off. Well, they've been going after each other a little bit down on the other end of the floor. Milt Wagner, 84% free throw shooter, and we know what it's like when it goes down the wire when Milt Wagner gets on that line. Shoots up over 90. He doesn't even touch that rim. That's what a freshman does when he sits on the bench and waits and just relaxes. <laughs> Jones just over there saying, hey, this is all just a bowl of cherry. If I wasn't playing here, I'd be on the playground somewhere. Right. You lose here and he probably will be tomorrow. Exactly. Right. I think the funny thing was Denny Crum had a fishing chip trip arranged for yesterday had he lost, uh, for Friday morning had he lost the day before. Now that, that's what you call a coach that's cool. Trying to get it to Person, and Ellison was right there in the passing lane. Louisville comes back down. A chance to go ahead on this trip. But it is a half-court game, what Sonny Smith wanted. Ball oh, Howard right. oh, didn't see it now. Coming back down is White. And Milt Wagner wraps him up. Jeff Hall didn't see the ball being passed to him over here. And for a moment, White didn't either. But then he glanced up, got eye contact, and took off. Watch the that, play here. White exactly. finally pops out on it. That's one of those plays kind of like we had in the Georgetown uh, North Carolina game a few years ago, where just an instinctive move was to go ahead and uh, pass the ball. And, hey, that's our cameraman, Terry Clark. And, and you couldn't hurt him if you hit him with a truck. He's in the best shape of any I guarantee you. Game. I guarantee you. He's one of the few guys in all the business that could have handled the charge. <laughs> <laughs> White going to the foul line. And Person sitting down and Billy Thompson returning. Billy Thompson comes back with four personal fouls at the 10-27 mark and McSwain leaves. White was the Georgia player of the year when he was a senior in high school. You got Morris, who was the Georgia player of the year when he was senior in high school. You got Moore, who was the Alabama player of the year in high school. And, and of course, you got Frank Ford with the Florida player of the year in high school. So that's not bad. You know, as person watches, as a great Auburn fan, he's down in the spinal cord unit down in a hospital down in Augusta, Georgia. David Kendrell, his favorite team, the Auburn Tigers. And I know some of the players want to pass along their best wishes and hope that he is coming along. Now Ford coming back in again. Sonny Smith really using his substitutes that he doesn't have a lot of very wisely. He'll be ready to come back at about the seven-minute mark and say, hey, fellas, you're going to have to go the last seven minutes with everything we've got for that starting lineup. So far, Sonny's a push-off. Fine game. Wagner gets free, and Howard bangs into him. 
and takes the foul. No, got by with a push off that time on Howard. He's posting up inside. He pushed Howard off a little bit. Did a good job just getting the ball off. Now Louisville starting to pick up a lot of foul opportunities. And next time uh, Auburn goes, or Louisville commits a foul, Auburn will go to the line. They're both being one and one. You know that Sonny Smith's college roommate was Dell Harris, former coach of the Houston Rockets, who's now a scout with the Milwaukee Bucks, who has been watching here. How about that hobby of his of working with Dale Earnhardt's crew in automobile racing? He worked in a pit crew. <laughs> he must know a little bit about it. You don't let any rookies down in that pit crew. Not near that uh, gasoline or whatever those stockers burn these days. Milk continues to hit from that foul line. Louisville trailing by one. We're at the 10-10 mark. Louisville goes back now to protect Billy Thompson. Louisville goes into his zone. In a very unusual looking zone. 1-1-3 one, one, with Thompson down on the baseline. Here's where Sonny wants to be thinking about getting Chuck Person back in there again to shoot over the top of that zone. Walk. Morris off to the right. Louisville. Wagner to Ellison. Oh, there's some shaky and ball handling. Great move by Howard. Went out of bounds. And, and Sonny Smith said, let's call a timeout and regroup here and talk about this zone defense that Billy Packer has pointed out. It's going Louisville's way. They have the ball right now. They will inbound it. And a chance to take the lead. And Auburn goes into their zone in all out-of-bounds situations. With nine minutes to go, the starters can almost make it the rest of the way, Brent, without being worn out. Both coaches have rested their starters well. Wagner. Long. Thompson gets it right back in his hands, and here's Jeff Hall. And it's Ellison. And a foul underneath. Deion Jones. 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 And again, you know, at 6'7", it's just tough when a guy's 6'10", not to push a little bit to get position. Curtis Ellison plays so tall. He listed 6'9". Some people say he's 6'10", but he, he plays like a 7-footer because he's got those hands way above his head all the time. He's got the long arms. Freshman of the year in the Metro this year. MVP of the Metro tournament. We've said it many times. He's certainly going to be one of the great ones in college basketball. Missed the free throw. Ball Take going out of bounds at that end. However, it was touched last by Auburn, so the Cardinals get still another opportunity to take the lead here. They've had a couple of field goal attempts, a free throw. They get the ball back, but they're down 65-64. Billy Thompson hadn't been able to get the offense since he's come back with those four fouls. Looks like he's trying to play on the perimeter instead of getting inside. Wagner, Louisville leads. Just like ice, Seth. At the right time, he hits his fourth field goal in nine shots. Our 12th lead change in the West Regional Final. Now here's that very unusual zone defense being played by Louisville, a 1-1-3. One, one, you see the three men all the way across in the baseline. Now, the, what's open are the foul lines extended. Pearson feels, that, feels where the spot should be, and he's right. Foul on extended, should have a jump shot. There it is, Frank Ford, he hits it. Smart coaching by Sonny. Perfect place to go against that defense for the jump shot. Ellison, oh, he with makes. foul by Moore, hits the field goal, and he'll come to the free throw line. You know, you, you don't get this far without excellent athletes, but you also don't get this far without some solid coaching, and both of these guys really working a great game today. Ellison going up over the top, and again, those three inches making this uh, available for him. There was a very interesting shot there before we saw the replay of Frank Ford grabbing Moore, Jeff Moore, and you could almost hear him saying, come on, big fella, we've got to have you for the stretch run. Climb back in this now. Ellison is going to be an All-American, but don't quit on us now. Don't let him be an All-American today. Yeah, huh? Exactly. <laughs> now, this time will come. Denny Crumb recognizing that that Auburn knows how to play against the 1-1-3, changes his defense to a 1-2-2. These coaches really in a chess match now. Fun ball game. 
Maybe not for them, but it is for us. <laughs> <laughs> Moore sends it back to Morris. Person can't get it inside, so he steps outside. And White, the shot clock is down to five seconds. Ford comes up, and he's short with his shot. Louisville's ball. Credit Denny Crum with that one. He came up with a yeah. light defensive switch, and Auburn does not solve it. Louisville leading by two. And what's so tough is that there's no way that Sonny Smith could have been ready for that particular defense with one day of preparation time. Ball patiently waits, takes it himself. Again, Louisville getting to the perimeter game, not going inside. Ellison liked to touch that ball. Rises up. behind the backboard. And oh, no right. basket. No basket. He was up on top of the cylinder. Billy Thompson. The ball had not yet come off the cylinder. So Auburn's possession and a chance to tie it. It's so tough. Here, Billy Thompson tried to pull his hand away at the last minute. You can see him pull it away. But he did make, make contact with the ball. Good call. Billy, Chuck Person does not seem real comfortable against this defense. Well, he's trying to find a hole. He found the hole in that other defense, and he found it in the man-to-man, -man, but he can't get the ball much in his 1-2-2 that they're playing against him. He ball it up in the middle. They lob it to him. He rises up. He loses control, and on the turnover, Louisville's ball. Jeff Hall just cradles it. The person was quoted as saying, conditioning is not a problem when you're playing in the NCAA tournament. But, you know, they've been out there a long time. Now it's starting to wear a little bit. Ford playing good defense on Wagner, not letting him touch the ball. Now White, I mean White on Wagner, not letting him touch it. Let that clock go down quite a bit. You got a lot of time to play in this game. Bring it down inside of 10 on the shot clock. I'm surprised, Paul doesn't realize it. Not free, Ellison runs it down on the turnover. They do not get a shot off, and there is a foul reaching back Brent I, I thought with this much time five and a half minutes to go in, in the game that was awful early for Louisville to be that passive on the uh, on the offensive end of the court you end up with like five or six seconds and having to take a bad shot when you can work a little harder earlier and get off a good shot and that was the second personal on Milt Wagner Frank Ford the junior guard up into the free throw line. He has 12 points, but only two and now three in the second half and 13 for the game. You know, interesting with that 45 second shot clock, tournament scoring this year is averaging 100, over 140 points a game, which is up 15 points over what we had in the previous year. No stall ball games. It's a one point Louisville lead. Let's see if Louisville's passive this time. They get back into their offense and start going back inside. You see a lot more movement here on this possession. Robert doing a good job defensively. Robert five, trying to stick right with him. Thompson with four fouls out of the wing, gives it up to Wagner. And again, the Cardinals bring the shot clock down inside of 10 seconds. And they will call a timeout. Denny Crum will bring them over. Five minutes. Dallas, Texas will be next. The cream rising to the top. And so immediately you think of men like Chuck Person in situations like this with a spot in the final four awaiting the winner. And of course, at the other side, you think of the tremendous talent like Mill White, the man they call ice for that team. The fact that Neil Wagner is only four of nine, person is nine of 17, but they are two great, great players in this situation. I think of the first time I really saw Chuck Person play, it was up at the Olympic trials, Brent. He was an alternate on that Olympic team. It's interesting, here we have in the NCAA tournament, two of the key players, Chuck Person and Johnny Dawkins, both were alternates on the Olympic team. Person, when he when he didn't make that final, the final team to be able to play, he didn't think he could even watch the games on TV, but of course he became a, a real key figure for him because he worked against Michael Jordan every day in practice. Billy Thompson gives it up to Ellison. What a shot. He the shot. He thought the shot clock, because they had only 10 seconds, had wound down close to zero. 
Again, that clock works against you if you don't get your offense going early. Louisville wasted really two possessions the last two. Now, Auburn has only one field goal in the last six and a half minutes. Well, you know who they'd like to put this shot up, don't you? Hall jumps out on White. Retreats. They spread it out. Person going outside the zone. That's a spot, but when he hesitates, you sometimes lose your rhythm. And they get an offensive rebound. Ford comes out and a second chance. And that's what has carried Auburn so far in this tournament. They pound away at that glass. Both teams using a lot of clock. Notice Person is outside the three-point lane. Now he rose right up that time, banged it in and out, and it's and Ford again. Ford, he saves it again, a third opportunity. Does he remind you a little bit of Bruce Dalrymple from Georgia Tech, how he gets from a guard position, all those slashing rebounds. Thompson, you would have to think, is somewhat tentative in there with the fourth personal foul. They've got to shut up. Well, since, Ford. since he's come back in the game, Denny Crum has exclusively been in zone defenses, so Billy and able to hide back there a little bit. This is a, they're matching up as Louisville. Both teams getting real passive offensively. From the other side, person oh, missing three. again. And Auburn will save it. Moore could have gone right back up. Person will take one this time. Four. If you let him shoot all afternoon, he's going to hit the field goal. And it puts Auburn up 70 to 69, 330. Now, let's see if Louisville doesn't go at the basket a little bit quicker this time. The clock became their opponent on the last two possessions. Pops it on Morris on the inside. Well, Louisville is really tentative. Not like them. Thompson like leaning in on Morris. Ellison thinking better of it and hand it off to Cook. And now Cook goes to Billy Thompson, and Louisville will take the lead at the three-minute mark. That's what Louisville wanted to do. Evidently, they came down and set almost a set play to get it inside to Billy Thompson, who's been great on the foul line and has been their horse in the tournament. They stay in that matchup defense. Ford off a fake. Sends it over to Person for the left side. Not there. Ford Thompson. underneath has it taken away, and Thompson with a field goal, and now a big rebound. 2.30 to go. Billy Thompson going to post up again down inside. He's got Morris on him. A double screen for Thompson. Thompson came in behind it, rises up. Doesn't get the roll, but it's tapped up and in. Did Ellison get that, or was it touched by Moore? Sonny Smith wants the time. He knows this possession. He's got to get a good shot. A beautiful double screen. Billy, it was a tremendous set play that Louisville used. Yes, a good double screen for Billy Thompson down in low. Credit Denny Crum for that. But I think you're going to have to credit an Auburn player for the tap in. It's either Person or Moore. Either one of them could get credit. It'll go to Ellison on the, on the score sheet. We'll see it from another angle. There's this double screen for Billy Thompson. He puts up the jumper. As I said, credit Denny Crump for a good call there. But watch. Two Auburn players actually touch this ball and put it back in. And I think it was Moore probably that got the bigger piece of it. Louisville with a three-point lead, two minutes and 14 seconds, and a critical possession here for the Auburn Tigers. I think Auburn should go to somebody other than Person here because Louisville's going to have all their defense stacked again, and maybe, maybe Frank Ford to try to get something off. Thompson is leaning on Person on the right side, and they get it into Moore, and it's rejected by Ellison, and here's Hall. Ellison at the defensive end, Hall for the layup. The Cardinals are a step closer to Dallas. Boy, Jeff Hall really showed a good first step when he picked up that loose ball. No need to force here. A lot of time. I try to get Frank Ford to try to make some kind of a penetrating move inside that zone. Person takes it himself, and it's down to three as he bangs in the jump shot. 127 to go. Still a lot of time. They've extended that defense out now a lot farther. When you do that, of course, it looks to Louisville for a backdoor cut. You've got the time clock on one side and the 45-second shot clock on the other. And Louisville's been a great free-throw shooting team down the stretch. And they'll put Thompson on the line. 
That's the fourth foul on Ford. Billy Thompson has been out of sight in the tournament on the line. And a matter of fact, for that, for the whole year. 72% free throw shooter on the year, but in the tournament, he's just been drilling everything. Now Auburn will take a timeout. The Cardinals leading by three. Thompson at the free throw line when we come back. Purvis Ellison has had some big moments this year, but none bigger than this, when he slapped away that shot attempt by Jeff Moore. And there was Hall waiting in the open court, bringing it down. Well, what Hall did so well after that block, Brandon, there would be a tendency when you get a loose ball like that is to hesitate, and by that time, the Auburn players would have been able to catch him. He immediately took off to the other end of the court, and that's how he was able to go ahead and make that uncontested layout. Now, Billy Thompson comes up to the line. He's hit only 5 of 11. He has been in foul trouble this afternoon in the tournament. He came in averaging 20 points a game, and he has been held today to 10. But he has contributed a couple of big plays here down the stretch. In the tournament, his free throw shooting has been excellent. What was he 10 for 10 the other night? You put he and Wagner on the line, you get the two seniors. It's going to be very tough for Auburn if Thompson can make this one. That makes it. A five-point game. And now you're on. You've got to penetrate. You've got to penetrate and go for three-point plays. Good exactly. job by White. White and again, Ellison. Ellison was up defensively. Loose. Crook goes for it. And it goes over as Morris reached back, battling for the ball. And that is his third personal foul. Well, Brent. Now you got to believe that the old Louisville Express has reached at least the suburbs of Dallas, and they're closing in now on Reunion Arena. 41 seconds, and Denny Crum will go back one more time to the Final Four. He makes a habit out of that. Coach. That's right. That's a half a dozen times, and he beat a man the other night, Dean Smith, that had seven. Smith was second behind Johnny Wooden of Final Four appearances. Denny Crum is closing in, and uh, got a lot more years to coach. Got a timeout. And we'll stay right here. Now there's the coaching staff. Denny Crum brings them over, his board of directors, and they'll run back down through the closing minutes what they want done. Denny, of course, been there 15 years, 12 NCAA tournaments. Three of the last six years he's been to the Final Four. Only one player has ever gone through his entire basketball program without at least playing in the Final Four one time. Yeah, we haven't even counted the times that he was assistant with Johnny Wooden in that Final Four. I guess Denny counts it as being automatic. Now, the other side of this, I think we should point out, Sonny Smith has showed us that he's a better coach than we thought he was. Well, he's done an excellent job with this team. And remember last year, you know, he quit his coach, and then they made that great run in, uh, in March and did so well in the NCAA tournament. Everybody, not, matter of fact, they were actually, they had applications out for his successor. And then he came back. Chuck Person decided to stay for his senior year. And, of course, the rest is history. They've had uh, quite a season. Three straight years now. As I said, he's uh, won over 20 games his first three years at Auburn. 13 and 16, 10 and 18, and 11 and 16. Imagine people wanting if he'd ever get it done, but he certainly has. And of course, right after this game, two more Southeastern Conference schools will go at it for a spot in Dallas in the Final Four. The LSU Tigers, and how about the job Dale Brown has done? Going up against the Kentucky Wildcats, we all know what Eddie Sutton has accomplished this year, moving from Arkansas to Kentucky and being led by the great Kenny Walker and that team. They'll be the favorite against LSU, but who knows the way the Tigers have been playing. And Brent talking about SEC. The ladies need to take a bow also. They had three of the teams in the final eight. Now it's a six-point lead, and it's all uphill for Sonny Smith from the Tigers. They really have to think about fouling now the rest of the way, and of course, Louisville has been absolutely deadly in the foul line. Crook is perfect from the free throw line. He is 12 of 12 in two games here in Houston. Person comes back with the miss. Thompson coming away with the rebound, and he drew the personal foul. Person did the only thing that he could, drive into the basket, try to get fouled, and commit the foul. 
So it'll be a long trip home to Auburn, Alabama tonight, but they can hold their heads high. They did a great job of the Sunday Smith in this tournament. They knocked out the top seed out West St. John's. And along the way, one Mr. Chuck Person proved that he can play basketball with anybody in America. And Brent, you said something I think that's really, I don't know if it's ever happened before, they beat three conference champions to get here. Uh, when you do that, you're talking about beating teams that are on a roll, beating teams that have a lot of confidence and just taking away their game. And quite an accomplishment. Hello, Dallas. Here we come. Of course, the unseeded teams have done very well in this tournament. Only seven of the seeded clubs got to the final 16. Let's see if Person can take it all the way inside. More. Now, a quick timeout call by the Auburn bench. Down by eight and 25 seconds to go. And well, you still got a chance. He never hands a gun away. Well, a lot of stories left in this tournament. You had Jimmy Valvano, you know, can he be Cinderella man again? The other night, he, he, last night, he had to think he's going to be playing against Judd Heathcote. What do you know, think about that upcoming Kentucky LSU game? Well, I never thought LSU would get out of Baton Rouge. That's what I know about it. Of course, Dale did a great job rallying his team back against Memphis State. The crowd had a lot to do with that. I never believed he could beat Georgia Tech in the Omni. So he's still alive. And, uh, and Eddie Sutton, as you mentioned, this entire year, that club has played to the top of their efficiency level almost every single ball game. Playing with three guards uh, has done a great job. You know, there's been a controversy this year about allowing teams to play in at least their home area arenas like Georgia Tech down in Atlanta. Kansas, we'll see the Jayhawks tomorrow, Kansas City. I gotta tell you that I'm gonna make a big vote in favor of those home area arenas because the crowd setting is so much a part of sports. And I'm so disappointed to see all these empty seats in a city like Houston for a game like this. Well, we're going to cancel those votes out, Brent. I'm voting against you. <laughs> but, 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 I have a, but I have a plan, all right? I have a plan of permanent sites, which I'm going to put down on paper, and maybe I can get some people voting behind me. <laughs> See them brazen cane. I even saw some of them up in the hey, Meadowlands. Hey, it's hard to promote. You're, it's hard to promote if people are worrying about what teams are going to play, and nobody knew it was coming here till last week. You know, I, I think you've got to go the permanent site route and, uh, and really promote it as a 365-day-a-year medal. Good play. Flips it to Wagner. And Wagner breaking away. And of course, he draws the personal foul. That's a good move to go long because Auburn was planning on trying to stop any pass that would be thrown in half court. Good aggressive move by Denny Crum. Of course, the game's close. You, you might not try that aggressive a play. But he had nothing to lose there and puts Wagner on the line, and he probably has nothing to lose here either. Second half, much slower paced in the first half. So fatigue did not become the problem I thought it would be, but maybe a little experience on Louisville's uh, part paid off here. Billy, what about tomorrow in the Naval Academy against Duke? Can David Robinson hold up? I think it's a great story for collegiate athletics in regard to the Naval Academy yeah, being great. able to be in the uh, in the final eight. And, of course, Duke University and Mike Krzyzewski has put together that program in solid footing. Dawkins against Robinson should be interesting. Push off. That's what you don't want to do if you're Curtis Ellison. You're better off letting Auburn score than stopping the clock for him automatically with a push off. You get five seconds, and the out-of-bounds throwing. Now the clock stopped, and of course, Auburn gets everything they want. By next year, and you can see Purvis Ellison looking down at Denny Crum, shaking his head, realizing that it was not a smart play. Auburn 8 of 12 from the line, and Louisville 16 of 19. And that damage on the part of Louisville has come in the second half of this game. You know, you talk about Auburn, they're going to lose person, and you don't replace a player like that, maybe not even in the history of your basketball team, but they're going to have four starters back. They'll make a run in the SEC again next year. Now, there's, you might as well pick up the ball now because the clock has not started. Person comes over on Cook, and another foul is missing. That's... Now, there's the case with Bill. When Milt Wagner's asking for a two-shot foul, it is not a two-shot foul because they were going for the ball. So it's not the uh, whether you're aggressive or not. It's the fact that he was going for the ball trying to play defense. Now, if they just grab Cook around the waist, 
That would have been a two-shot foul. No quit in that man. No, no quit at all. And now you can see the importance of that foul by Ellison. You know, you stop the clock. You don't want to do that with your Louisville. And they're in pretty good shape as it is, but don't give that opponent another chance. High off the glass. Loose underneath on the scramble, and they get into the hands of Wagner, and here's Hall on a breakaway. Hello, Dallas. Technical manager was Stu Meyer. The broadcast associates, Benny DeVito, led the way there, and thanks to all the crew who did the job. And of course, coming up after this, we will have the second of the regional championship games for you, and that will match up Kentucky against LSU.